Okay, hello, Uranium friends. Happy weekend. Uh, let's get right into this. So you are NM. Now, if you've been following me, yep, I got a uh, stop hunted on my trailing stop. Uh, yeah, no big deal. That's how it goes. But there's a couple of things I just want to show you with these lines here that I have marked up on here, and I'm probably going to take them off. So first thing I did is that I, this, as we can see, this is the life of this stock. We're on the weekly chart. It's URNM, the ETF. This is the life of it, right? So uh, what I did here is I, I made my own range box, okay? So this is what the area, the value area that I've determined. It's really based off of this high and this low, actually. So, But you can see the top of this box, and there's a lot, of the, you know, it was re resistance, and then it took it out. Then it became support, came back into this value area, bounced, uh, you know, resistance again, bounced over, got through. So there's a lot of action right here at the top of this box. That's why it ends up there. Uh, the bottom is, you know, one could say you could probably tighten it up to, you know, this 27 area if you wanted to. But for all intents and purposes, I'm just keeping it over here at this 25 level now. So that's kind of, of the range that I've been, you know, just keeping an eye on. Now, secondly, these blue lines. Now, this is, you, you, you all, if you follow me at all, you know that I like the volume profile. And there's a setting in the volume profiles where you can delineate through these lines the value area high and the value area low. So that's all these are. So, um, and it depends on where you scroll into on this chart, as you'll see when we move forward. But uh, this is what this does. And this is mathematical, right? This is not up to interpretation. It's not up to what I think or what anybody thinks or what, uh, you know, uh, some random fintwit guy says, oh, well, the, the value area is there. So regardless of that, it's mathematical, and it determines what the value area high is and the value value area low is, okay? But I, I was working off this range box for the time being. Anyway, as we zoom in, and we're still on the weekly, you're going to start to see these levels will start to change. So they adjust for closer action, right? So as you can see, the value area is tightening up. So now we have this new value area that we can see here, and it kind of helps you to delineate uh, where you might expect to see some action. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen, right? So if you sat there and go, oh, the value area broke down, oh, it could be wrong, no, whatever. So these things happen, right? So the value area tightens up. So you saw that, it's good. I just wanted you to see that. You can use that as a tool. So now this dotted line here, this is what we call the point of control. Now, I don't normally keep the point of control line on my chart. I'm just putting it here for reference because I'm always able to note to figure out where the point of control is because, look, this is the most volume we have. So, And, and it, you can see the spike here, and you can just say just by looking at this, the life of the stock, here's the point of control. It's 3250, all right? So what I'm going to do now just to make this not so noisy, um, well, we'll leave it here for now. Okay, so that's the deal. Um, if you all recall, I got into this trade when we called this um, momentum shift that was happening, that we think was happening around in late December, early January, right? Um, and I just walked my stop up on these traders. They finally got hit when this weekly level broke. So right now, I mean, it's literally, it's a, it's a double, it's, this is a weekly double bottom. So yes, you can say technically, um, weekly consolidation has begun because it did take out the previous week's low but it only did it by a penny uh the, you know the i guess the only thing of concern would be is that we got a pretty big upper wick here right so and when we go into the daily we're going to see the actual action so <clears throat> i want to re-enter um into uh trading shares on this again so you know when i start to look and the reason why I'm showing you these these range boxes and these value areas is that I want to see where's my next entry. So I use that in conjunction with several things. So we have all of our moving averages stacked up below. The, the white line is 200 day um, and all these other averages here. So you got the 12 EMA, the 26 EMA, the 50 EMA, and then this one down here below is the 50 DMA, the simple moving average. So I'm I'm compiling that data visually to see like, where do I want to get a spot. So then the next thing I can look at is, okay, where's the next weekly pivot? Well, the next weekly pivot is right here. 
So it's at 3360. Now remember our point of control, 3250. Okay. What else do we have here? A possible gap that might need to get filled. We'll see it better on the daily. So, but now I'm starting to eye up this level, this 3360 level. And why? Because, well, I have all my moving averages here. Let's see if I can just make this bigger so we can see it. Of all my moving averages here, I have a pivot and it's at the top end of my value area or my range that I've decided to use as a little bit of a gauge, right? And as we zoom in closer, you know, the um, the math on the actual volume profile, it starts to tighten up these value areas too. So then you sit here and you look and say, all right, well, it's obvious, right? All these levels are getting rejection. The value area is there. Um, so those are the ways you can start making determinations on how you want to approach trading shares. Okay, we're, we're going to go into the daily here. So yeah, um, pretty easy to see. I mean, this 12 EMA has been a fantastic guide for quite some time, literally since late December, early January, right? So once it overtook the 12 EMA, the red line, it never got below it again until just now. So yes, and listen, the reason why we started calling um, a momentum shift here in December, and you can go back to, I think it's episode three of Uranium Talk, but you can go back to Uranium Talk, and we have the video proof, we have it on video, that we were calling out this momentum shift. So it had to, a little bit to do with, you know, uh, where is my thing? Goodness gracious. Uh, it had a little bit to do with, uh, sorry. It had a little bit to do with the possible inverse head and shoulders pattern that we were looking at. You know, we, we described it in that video. You could go back if you want um, to look at it. So, but in my opinion, we're back to the old, um, we have a momentum shift occurring now that, and the 12 EMI, EMA is actually the guide. And you can, you can see this, right? It's, it's very simple to see. Uh, there's nothing magical about the way I'm playing this. I'm using that as my guide, especially for my trailing of my stops, which it took out, right? So now I'm starting to look at the next pivot area. So this is the 3360 is the next pivot area where it may be of interest to me. And there's a couple of things that are lining up, right? It's right smack in the middle of the value area. It's kind of uh, at the 200-day moving average. Uh, there's a gap to fill down here. So there's plenty of reasons that this is going to be my area of interest. Now, I've said it in the Uranium Talk video, and I'm going to say it here too. Um, 3360 breaks down and support breaks down, right? So there's a lot of action here. This is one big update. So it kind of had its little short squeeze here. Probably when it broke this level, that was your, you know, your shorts are saying, all right, I gotta, I'm going to start being underwater here if I don't get out of this. Uh, so then you had your little short squeeze. But the problem with little short squeezes is that they don't develop uh, levels of support on the way up. So you have a big candle here that, you know, it could potentially wipe right through. So then you're starting to look at your next support area. But for now, my area of interest is going to be 3360 on URNM. Um, you know, increasing bear volume for the past two days. But the volume is still okay. You know, it's, it's not like red flag volume to me at the moment. I mean, your up days are higher than your down days. That's a pretty good sign, right? Uh, URNM is a little bit more of a retail ticker. And uh, when we look at URA, we'll see if there's actually any sort of difference in, in this volume profile. But uh, the weekly had sort of, uh, quite an increase in, in, um, in volume there. So, you know, there is a little bit of a red flag thing going on. You have your upper wick. You have your increased volume. Uh, you have your uh, back test of this range that uh, it kind of broke through and it took out the weekly stair step pattern. So as you can see, every week since we called out this momentum shift in late December, every week has been a higher low. This one's a little bit of a dinky pullback. Tried Maybe tried to fill that gap and it just went off on, on its way. So 3360 is my area where uh, uh, for interest for me for URNM at the moment. Okay. So URA on the weekly 
Yeah, uh, again, same deal. Look, we have some pretty high volume here. I just want to look at the volume quick on the daily. Yeah, so now here's a different story, right? So this is a, a much bigger red flag, right? So look at the two heavy volume selling days. And these are big candles, right? So there was a little bit of a buying. You know, there was some dip buying here. But again, 12 EMA rode it all the way up. A couple of little back tests right there into the 200-day moving average. Makes some sense. Wrote it all the way up. Now it's it, it, the URA as well as URNM has said, yeah, well, we're done using the 12 EMA as support. Um, we're pulling back to see where we can find support. So now here's our next pivot again. Uh, we have a little bit of a double bottom here, but it did take out this level as well. This is the daily. So we're going to go back to the weekly. And it's a double bottom on the weekly. Let's see what we got here. 16... And 11. So, yeah, so weekly consolidation again is underway here. Um, where does it go to? Okay, so do we have any gaps to fill? But it's, you know, the dynamic is very much the same as URNM. So, all of your moving averages here are here right at this pivot. So, the area of interest for me is 2104. I want to see what happens here. Of course, I'm in position on URNM and I'm in position on URA. I'm just talking about where am I going to load up uh, my additional traders or anything to that effect, or where am I going to decide that hey maybe this is this move is is giving back too much. I need to uh, reassess what I'm doing. Okay, so that's that's how I'm kind of playing these ETFs at the moment, but they do dictate the space. So the other thing that we need to be aware of where's my little my purple arrow? Hold on. Because we do have a gap on the daily um, that needs to be highlighted because, you know, gaps can be magnets. So there's a little tiny gap right there. Okay, so the high here is 17 and the low is 23. So you have a five penny gap right here. All right, so, you know, gaps like to get filled. It's just that simple. High volume drawdown breaks our. Um, uh, we're uptrend metric that we've had since late December, the 12 EMA. So, you know, can there be more downside? Yeah. Could this thing just flip around on us, depending on the news this week? It's possible, right? We've got the um, the House is voting Tuesday on a bill. And the um, chemicals earnings, CCJ's earnings are the ninth, I believe. So. And we're going to look at CCJ in a minute. So, you know, could it flip? Yeah, it could flip. But uh, the technicals are telling you something a little bit different right now, right? So now if you use market psychology, you can say, all right, well, this is the big drawdown. So people can load up and then get people to start FOMO buying after the news. You know, it could be any of those things. Um, you know, the way I looked at it is we had a pretty good run up into some potential catalysts this week. And, you know, I'd be looking to take some chips off the table. But now that we've had this pullback, you know, and it's a decent size pullback, you know, it's URA is it's down 8%. So U.UN on the weekly um, inside bar. Well, it's actually an outside bar. So U.UN still made a higher high on this weekly here. It does have a little bit of a pivot. And it's, you know, kind of dancing around. Again, all of these guys are starting to use these EMA. The, 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 the moving average stack is, is below everything, which is, you know, it's a nice thing. So the thing is, is that maybe you're a little bit more tolerant and a little bit more patient. I don't really trade uh, the spot fund. I kind of just have a position. If it gets some, some big good action uh, to the upside, you know, like a 5 or 8 or 10% uh, premium to NAV, you know, maybe I'll trim. So, and if it gets like uh, some good action to the downside with the five or eight or ten percent discount to NAV, I, I'm usually adding. I'm, I'm actually playing the the, the NAV uh, along with the technicals on this, uh, and I like when they line up. But our next area for me of uh, interest is going to be 1566 on U.UN and uh, U.UN as it's got the 200 day. And the this little weekly pivot here, um, a little bit of a positive sign for, in particular for this name 
that the these other names did not see on the daily is that there was some some buying here at the you know and and that's what this lower wick gives you but it's not much to speak of again okay so we've had an increase in the bear volume we've broken this 12 EMA which we've been using as support since early, late December where we called it out that there was a momentum shift so uh, are we calling out a momentum shift at the moment? Uh, we're calling out to say, hey, a little bit of a flag is going on here, a little bit of a red flag, right? So when you get a moving average that it likes to run along and then it breaks it down and stays below it, you know, you have a momentum shift. So here it broke below, quickly recovered. So this is what we want to see. Um, but, you know, it looks like a little bit of buyer exhaustion up here. And we'll see how it plays out. But that's U dot UN. So a lot of the charts are kind of looking the same, right? URA, 200-day moving average with its pivot, lost its 12 EMA. Uh, URNM, rather. URA, 200-day moving average with its pivot, lost the 12 EMA. U dot UN, 200, uh, 12 moving average, lost the 12, 12 EMA. The pivot's at the 200-day moving average. The 200-day is actually a little bit below that. So we're going to see how it plays out. CCJ on the weekly. Yeah, so you get these upper wicks. You start to see some buyer exhaustion. The good thing is, you know, we've had some increasing volume for CCJ. Makes a little bit of sense, right? We're coming into their earnings report. And this is like a, you know, the whole uranium world is waiting to hear what CCJ has to say. But again, I'll bring this in. Well, this is the weekly, so I'll bring it in on the daily when we see where that pivot is. Yeah, I mean, trend lines, I'm not the biggest uh, proponent, fan. They're a good guide to use. You know, a trend line like this isn't really valid unless you have three touches on a solid candle. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, you know, this trend line up here still needs to develop, in my opinion. So, you know, could I do something like this? Maybe, but it, it's just not, you know, and, and, and is this you know, just a breakthrough, whatever, you know, uh, again, it, it's there for me just as a visual and it's there for you just as a visual, not the biggest deal in the world, but what do we have again? You know, everything moved. Uh, there was a big momentum shift in the space. You have a weekly stair step pattern. That's all the way up a higher low every single time, a little bit of a dinker here, big deal, a higher high every week, you know, until that pattern changes on CCJ. Um, this thing is still good to go. So I guess your most important level, you know, for those of us who are trailing stops or looking for entries or want to do traders or are looking to go short or however you want to deal with it, the the biggest factor is going to be, does this weekly low from, um, really, it's actually going to, going to be this one now since we're starting a new week and we're starting a new week right at this low. So don't be surprised. So Maybe you want to give CCJ a little bit more room and say, okay, well, the previous week's low is where I'm going to be working off of. That's going to be my area of interest, whatever you want to do. My area of interest is here as the EMA stack is here and the 200-day moving average is here and there's a little bit of a pivot here. That's my area of interest for CCJ at the moment. We have to see how it plays out. So, yeah, again, the 12 EMA is a guide. So, so CCJ. Um, it hasn't even touched this 12 EMA yet. Okay, so yeah, RSI is running hot, but um, these two days of consolidation um, have cooled off this RSI, which is really actually a great sign. So we talk about this in the in the um, uh, in uranium talk video. Uh, we didn't really want to see a blast through all these resistances because everything was extended. So even if you did get through the big resistances, like on the monthlies, um, you know, you might've had to have a little bit uh, of a, of a pullback afterwards. It, it probably would have been a pretty good fake out because everything would have been extended, especially on the shorter time frame. So, you know, CCJ, this is very, very healthy and you, you're going to want to see something exactly like this. So, you know, a back test on this 12 EMA and then a go, and then, and then it's go time again. What did it do? Look at this back test. What did it do on the RSI? It cooled it off enough to get a, the next leg up. So really, that's what, what we're going to be looking for. So for me, truly, at the moment, 
Let's see how CCJ reacts right there at 2270 at 2722. You know, because that's going to be your your 12 EMA test. That's going to be a daily level test. Um, so we want to see how that reacts there. So you know, CCJ has not lost its 12 EMA. URA has. URNM has. U.UN has. Let's see what DNN's doing. So <clears throat> Denison has been strong, right? Everybody's been pretty happy with this one lately. Uh, it's made a great move. This is a bit of a trend line that you can be keeping an eye on. So, yeah, but the weekly, again, has not, it it hasn't lost last week's low yet. So it's a positive sign. There's a little bit of a sign of exhaustion here, up here. There's a little bit of an increase in, in the bear volume. It makes some sense. But again, we still were get, uh, above. A lot of these charts look the same dynamically as far as our moving averages and where our pivots are. And, you know, the true metric for a lot of stocks, and especially with commodities, of course, this white line, which is the 200-day moving average, okay? <clears throat> it's had many a times where it's gotten above it and hasn't held above it, right? So... You know, there's the old school saying with um, a 200-day moving average, if it's above, it's a bull. If it's a, if it's below, it's a bear. You know, that's from like 100 and something years ago. So, you know, there's plenty of people who still look at that. So the 200-day moving average has been the bane of the existence for DNN for a very long time. It got through. When it got through, it was blast off time. So let's see what, what the back tests start to look like. You know, let's take a look at the daily here. <clears throat> yeah, so the daily is in full-fledged consolidation here. But again, look at this consolidation. What did it do with the RSI? It cooled it. When it cooled the RSI into a nice support area, what happened? It moved up again, right? So this is what we want to see. We've gotten our RSI cooled. The difference here is that, again, we, we've lost this 12 EMA on the daily. There's no gap to fill. Uh, an area of interest for me since I've lost the 12 EMA is a dollar 22, right? So the dollar 20 area, uh, where the 200-day moving average is, where this uptrending um, trend line is, which is fairly arbitrary, but I mean it does have some validity for some people. So it's there for you. Uh, that's going to be my area of interest, or of course 153. You know, if it takes out 153, um, it's gone. You know, we, we could be looking, we could start looking up at these other levels. So, you know, this consolidation, um, if the uranium space is going to gonna roll on and leg up after this, you want this consolidation. I want it because I sold all my traders on this. So I, I'm looking to add here. Uh, on Denison, um, you know, again, I, I talk about this on, on Uranium Talk video that we just put out. Uh, I am looking to see what happens tomorrow. Um, I will probably take some risky trades into this, um, the news catalysts that are coming this week. So, you know, we've got the House voting on a, a potential Uranium ban, and we have CCJ earnings that are incoming. So, but my area of interest at the moment truly is is a dollar twenty two, and uh, I personally hope it gets there. I'm sure a lot of people that are in position on Denison uh, right now and are bullish do not want to hear me say that. And either way, it doesn't matter, right? So I am cored up in a pretty sizable chunk of leaps that I have expiring in March, and then I have more expiring. I I forget right now, but in the middle of next year or something like that. So it's not like I'm gonna miss anything here. But uh, you know, if I I I wouldn't mind grabbing some physical shares. I'm actually gonna put my alert here because I want to see if it gets there. I want to see that reaction, and you know, we'll see what Monday brings. NXC, the last one on this little video on this group. Um, you know, NXE kind of led the way for a while and, you know, it's petering out, you know, it's just, it's, it's as simple as that, but the deal is still the same, right? So we have, uh, upper wicks, higher volumes, look at the volume, you know, NXE, 
you want to see all this green volume with all this low red volume. So you get this big green volume again. So you have the low red volume. These big volume days, I mean, even though, look, you had a huge red volume day, but what happened? Well, it went up. So it's just because it closed lower than it opened, <clears throat> but you had the dip buying there. So you could start to look at these wicks during the weeks on these weeklies and say, all right, well, I had the wicks there and it had some volume. So there was dip buying. And then you could zoom into the daily and just see what happened during that week to, to give you a little bit more. But here we don't have that. We have the upper wick. Sometimes they call these inverted hammers and they're usually reversal signs. I'm not um, in the camp of saying that there's a reversal. I'm in the camp of saying that we need to keep an eye on the fact there's a possibility that we've had a momentum shift to the downside in the uranium space. That's all I'm saying right now. That's the only thing that I'm saying. Uh, we'll, we'll look at the daily. Yep, we've lost the 12 EMA, right? So, it, you know, I could be uh, like a parrot here and just keep saying it. Uh, this one's, you know, NXC is a little bit different, but... You know, once we were calling it out, we were calling the momentum shift out here. But look how many times it's lost the 12 EMA and regained it. So this one is a little bit more of a choppy guide for you. So it's it's harder to use the 12 EMA here. So, but what could you use? Well, maybe you could use this blue line, which is the 26 EMA. So for some reason, maybe NXE likes to use that line. This is I'm not saying, hey, this is your trading plan. Use that. I'm saying that these are little visual guides at glance that you can use or I can use for that matter. So, but my area of interest truly is this first pivot here, you know, because you had a little bit of a swing pivot low here and it was off to the races. You can start to see the seller exhaustion. Uh, if you've been following my trades and my videos, I kind of sold some $5 calls against my position up here. So truly, uh, I'm kind of happy that things are playing out the way they are because I did sell some physical up here as well. And I'd like to reload it as we get down here into this area. You know, I've been talking about this in my videos for a very long time. I've been playing this range, the 4 to 480 range, for a long time. You know, I've been playing this range. I've been trading in and out of this range. I still hold cores. still going to continue to hold cores. But I'm just trying to reduce the cost basis on my course. So what do I do? Every time I make some profit, it reduces the cost basis basis on my course. Uh, when I take these these spots where there's pivots and supports and they hold, well, then I just kind of have some traders along the way too. So I trim them out a little bit. I trail some stops. That's how I roll with this stuff. So um, signs of some momentum shift across the board. Does that change? Um, into the news catalyst this week, uh, it's possible, right? So uh, could it be the good old manipulators, for lack of a better term, uh, you know, trading action goes this way. This is, these are known catalysts. This is not a catalyst that's, um, you know, a surprise. You know, a big surprise might be, well, uh, you know, somebody comes out and says, you know what, we've just realized there's no more uranium above the ground. Uh, we're done, you know, maybe Sprott comes out and says, hey, we don't have any more uranium that, you know, we can't, we can't even buy it anymore, even though we're 10% above NAV. Well, you know, that's, that's a surprise catalyst and, and those things can, can set us off, but we have a known catalyst and, you know, market psychology is usually that uh, known catalysts uh, can be selling events, especially when everything runs up into them. So now we have the confusion of, well, things are pulling back into this catalyst. So, and that's why, and I talk about this in uranium, in our uranium talk video that we put out, um, you know, I'm going to be looking to see what the action is tomorrow. And I'm probably going to be looking to slink into some, some, some trading positions to play these catalysts. I have to see how it goes. I can't say whether I'm going to do it or not. I need decent levels to work off of. So, you know, if I decided that I wanted to take this right here in, into either this support area or this support area, you know, it's a 5%, 5 to 10% drawdown. Uh, I'm sorry, about a 5% drawdown. So do I really want to take a 5% risk on something like that? Well, I don't know. You know, I have to look to see what has better supports. You know, I, I'd be more inclined to take uh, CCJ, you know, obviously. but um. 
you know, we still need to cool the flag a little bit, uh, the RSI a little bit more. It would be nice if we could. You know, I'd love to see a cool off like this right here. So if this thing, again, pulls down to this level, I'm going to be pretty happy. And I might want to take some uh, a stab at it because I have some decent levels of support that I could work off of. And then it's just a decision on how I want to handle that. So it's coming into earnings. It's running hot. It's giving us a little bit of a consolidation here. It could be an opportunity for me. I'll have to decide. But that's the deal right now. Some yellow flags in the space into some possibly big catalysts. So it's 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 anybody's game here. All right? Over and out.